Since ChatGPT seems to replace all developers around the world, let's have a look at how it writes Blazor WebAssembly code, shall we? But first, thank you very much to today's sponsor, Skillshare. I'm pretty sure you already know what Skillshare is, but if not, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills like programming. Invest in yourself and your personal growth. If you have a specific skill you're trying to learn, Skillshare is the perfect place to start from not only programming, but also photography, illustration, to graphic design, freelancing, productivity, and more. You can find classes that will match your goals and interests. Like for instance, the ones from Marcus Brownie regarding YouTube or the productivity classes of Ali Abdal and Thomas Frank. I just love that stuff. And of course, you can also get my course on Skillshare about authentication and authorization with .NET. Here we cover JSON Web Token, Tokens, roles and refresh tokens, so maybe you want to have a look. So jumpstart your 2023 goals with this exclusive offer. Try Skillshare free for seven days and then get 20% off your first year by using the link in the video description. And now let's have a look at ChatGPT. So I asked the AI how to build a calculator app with Blazor WebAssembly. I know this is not really specific, but it already starts pretty nice actually. It explains what Blazor is, it explains the step, what you have to do you can uh, use Visual Studio or the .NET CLI to create a Blazor web assembly application. You need a Razor component for the HTML part and so on. There's the built-in component input number, buttons, we're using binding here, the on-click event for the buttons. Sounds great, but uh, then well comes the code. And I tried this several times and it created, well, different results. So for instance, this is one result and what it does is, well, you can see it here already. If you know a little bit of Blazor, we get some buttons. We've uh, got an input field, not an edit form or anything, no input number here. It's telling us to use input number, but it doesn't use it here with the current value. Okay, you can do it like that, of course. I mean, why not? And the result then, well, it looks like that, all right? And you can already see it here in the code, the add function, subtract, subtract function, and so on. It does something, sets the operand, but then the result is the current value, and then the current value is zero. Okay, what, what, what is actually happening here? So, of course, I just copy-pasted the code and then was hoping to, well, get some applications here, plus the result is five, all right? What about six now? And plus again, result is six. So, it, it does not really work. This is the simple answer here, but I got several results. So let's just have a look at Visual Studio here. This is one of the results. Then I've got another calculator and this, well, I have to give this to a chat GPT. This actually works. I can enter some numbers here, hit calculate, and then I get a result. This is just an addition, but Again, this was really not very specific, right? This is just a calculator application. So this can actually be anything. And again, I got several results. When we have a look at the other one, this one, for instance, this is not really finished, right? We've got a read only input field here with some buttons. Again, looks strange. Then what I tried was to be a bit more specific and I asked build a calculator app that looks exactly like an old school calculator with Blazor web assembly. Tried this as well with questions like, please create a calculator with Blazor web assembly that looks like the old or like, like the Windows calculator application. Got this result here. And now the best thing here is actually how this thing looks, right? So when I really ask for an old school calculator, so I'm a bit more specific, you know where I'm getting here, right? Then this looks like that. Doesn't really work at all, but it looks nice, right? So then I thought, okay, let's just forget about Blazor here. Please write HTML and CSS for a typical calculator application. So how does this look? Well, here's the code. Again, just copy and pasted everything. And this is the result. Actually, already pretty nice. Don't know what this empty space here is, but I think we can fix that real quick. But we got 
nice hover animations here, right? Or just change in the styling on hover. But there still, of course, is no function because I only ask for the HTML part. With that, I actually ditched the complete calculator idea because when we have a look at other implementations, I had to comment these out uh, because then some types have been used that does not really exist here in the Blazor WebAssembly applications. The function implementation is then not there. Lots and lots of stuff that simply does not work. So you cannot really ask chat GPT for now to build a complete application. For instance, I also tried to ask chat GPT to build a tic-tac-toe game with Blazor WebAssembly, SignalR and Identity and .NET 7. So, well, I told chat GPT what I really want and it gave me the steps, which is pretty nice. It knows that there is a hub you have to create with SignalR and so on. But then I asked to show me the code and unfortunately it, it cannot do that. Ask again, but then it even apologized. That was really nice, but uh, I got no code. Anyways, it can be a great start. And then the last thing I tried was write all CRUD operations for Blazor WebAssembly application. Again, it explains a little bit. That was nice. What is CRUD? What does it stand for? And then it starts with the create call or the create operation here. It creates a page, great stuff. Then a form, not an edit form, just a form. And then we got a handle submit. I haven't tested this. I just had a look here. First thing I already see that you really have to be careful, right? You have to pay attention because HTTP here, the HTTP client is used, but it is not injected, right? You can fix that real quick if you know how to do it and what you're actually doing here. But if you are a total beginner, then maybe you're struggling with these results, right? After that, I asked ChatGPT to use best practices and it really did add some changes. It used the edit form, for instance, here with even uh, validation. So I am not sure if the complete code works in particular because it all of a sudden then stopped down here. But again, there is code that does work and it can be a great start. But my take on ChatGPT is this. ChatGPT is great. It really is awesome what it can do, but it for now does not replace any developer. You have to be very, very careful if you want to use the code of ChatGPT. It can give you great ideas. It is a a great start sometimes maybe, but it cannot create complete applications. It cannot create error-free applications. Of course, it is a tool, a great tool, but it does not replace developers. So please folks, calm down. AI is great. It is getting better and better, but I think it will take some time until it will replace real developers. Maybe it even never does because for developing great applications, you also have to be really, really creative. I know that AI can do creative stuff already, but again, for me, it is a great tool and maybe I will use it in the future. Don't know about that, but you definitely do not have to be afraid to lose your job or to not even start learning developing Blazor, for instance, because of all the AI stuff. So now if you think you want to learn more Blazor WebAssembly, for instance, just click on the videos here on the screen.